If I have a million dollars that I want to invest, I'm going to put something ridiculous like a thousand dollars in transaction costs because I don't care if I lose it or not. And my transaction is going to be mine just like this. And you might put your transaction before me and just put one dollar, which by the way is still like a shit ton for a transaction cost, and yours is not going to go through because you didn't put enough. Today's Monday, um, and I've really had a full on meeting day today, and it was kind of interesting. What I want to do, what I, what I wanted to film though, is I had this meeting with a friend, and I really had him explain to me some some interesting concepts about cryptocurrency and about how blockchain works and about how trading works in this sense. Um, I'm really interested in the space because I think it's a smart concept and it's an efficient concept and I believe that it's really going to affect the way we do everything in a matter of five to ten years. Um, so I'm really interested to find out more, maybe experiment with it a little bit so that I can understand how that plays out in the macro economic context and be able to adjust. So I'm going to put some excerpts from it uh, here. They're way too long um, in the in the in the no, in the in the original format, so I'm not sure if we're gonna put all of them. But I really think there's some great insight in there for you to understand, and you can learn more for yourself and going out there and Google stuff and just 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 do that. So um, I'm gonna give you guys updated on my progress on this. I'm still trying to get the gist of it. Meanwhile, in agency agency land, this is about 8 p.m. right now. Finished kind of the day of work, and. Um, now going to have a little bit, a little bit of, of, of a, a little bit of a meeting. That's what I wanted to say. But I, my tongue keeps dancing. Any case, um, so yeah, that's kind of what's happening. A little bit of a sneak peek. Um, I, I think I told, told you this like two, three times before. If you've been watching the vlogs for the last week or two, um, we're really planning on doing some new things for the whole brand, which I think is really interesting and it's a step in, it's a step in the good direction. We also have started posting stuff on Facebook, Instagram. We're going to start posting more stuff on Medium and LinkedIn and all these platforms. So watch out for content on that. You can find all the, the links to the, in the description below for all those platforms. Um, so a lot of great stuff coming out. Hopefully they will give you value. They will help you out, whatever it is you're doing. And I mean, that's kind of the goal. So um, thank you so much for watching today's vlog. We're going to wrap in and we're going to go in the actual um, content with the cryptocurrency and uh, tomorrow is going to be a packed day too so i'm really looking forward for that till then watch that and talk to you soon hey to the vlog or wherever we're going to be posted so it's mostly about like hype and perception mm -hmm. with most of them so it kind of it's kind of like with waves if people will believe in it and they invest in it it's a good investment so for a great ico you can look at several indicators and for example i'll talk about ian bolina in a bit he uses this, he has like a really famous spreadsheet that has gone viral um, online and he gives scores like in percentages for ICOs. So he takes into account the team, its investors. So if the team has, you know, like people from, with a consulting background or that worked at McKinsey or that, you know, our MIT or something like that, they're really credible. Advisors, the same thing, especially like these projects need to be blockchain focused. So if they have, for example, Kyber, the one that's upcoming, they have Vitalik Buterin, the co-founder of Ethereum as an advisor, they're like, the hype is through the roof. You know, just because he's an advisor, they're gonna do really well. So these things really matter. And then you're gonna look at a few other things. So the numbers of the number of tokens that they create, how many tokens they give out during the crowd sale, because some of them would give 80% out and keep 20% for the team, but some of them might ask for 50 million and they only give away 20%, which means they want a valuation of 250 million from the get-go, which is quite a bit. So when you're looking at trading, you're actually looking at not necessarily the ICO that's going to raise the most amount of money, but the ICO that is really balanced and can, you know, it can explode on the secondary markets. So as I said here, yeah, um, you have a ton of people who do not get in. So say for example, you're, you're just asking for 25 million, like 20, 25 million right now is a, is a decent sum to ask because if it's hyped, it will get sold in like a few minutes and then everyone will jump on it and even at 2x, 2.5x, 3x, people will still buy like crazy and it's gonna go up in price like straight away, which is crazy. So you're looking at that. A lot of it is based on perception. So 
the list of ICOs that I have right now that I invested in September is just kind of an average of, okay, I saw Ian's spreadsheet and this guy, he has so much clout now that if he talks about an ICO and he says, guys, I'm gonna invest in this, their Telegram group goes up by like a thousand people. And like a good ICO, so you can look at community as well, a really good ICO will have like 3,000 people on their Slack. Kyber has like 32,000, they're the biggest Slack in the world because they asked for you to be on the Slack in order to be whitelisted. Mm -hmm. But that's, the community is also a really good way to judge the hype within an ICO. So there's all these different indicators. So as I said, it's important to be in the loop. I have um, Telegram groups that I created for myself. I join these different Slack groups depending on you know what I need at a certain point in time. And I just follow, because I don't understand, I have friends that understand ICOs really well. Like they read the white paper once and they're like, okay, this project has a lot of potential. But when I started, I was literally, okay, I invested in one that I knew was going to be good. And then I was just looking at Slack and looking at Slack. And you can kind of tell the people who know what they're talking about, because you have people that just jump on the bandwagon, kind of like we are right now. We, we don't really know what we're investing in, but you have people that are crypto enthusiasts and they're like, oh no, wait, because Xerox is going to be really good because they're going to work with this and this and this project and wait until that's announced. Their price is going to skyrocket. So I was just looking at the guys that kind of knew what they were talking about, wrote to them in private, like, hey man, you know, I'm, I'm pretty new to this. Like, why do you think Xerox is gonna be good? Why do you think I shouldn't sell now? And they tell me, well, you shouldn't sell now because it's not on this and that exchange. Just wait for it a few, a, a few more days, you know? So then you kind of like get the opinion from like 10 people and when 10 people tell you the same thing, of course it's not a sure thing because these things change like crazy. Example, with zero X, um, I sold, so we went to 10x, I sold half of my stake at 10x and I was like, okay, I'm gonna keep half of it because I think it's gonna go even higher. And we were waiting on an announcement and then one of their early investors, just to protect their investment, sold like 12% of their stake, which was like one something, 1 $1.5 million dollars worth of crypto. So the price just went down when they dumped and I was like, ah, fuck, well, okay, I'll just sell my stuff now as well, which is was 6x, so still is a really good return but I could have sold everything at 10X. So obviously you need to be in the loop. There's a difference between when the crowd sale will be and when the tokens are tradable. Every crowd sale, and, and this is something very important, you need to have a database where you write down all the specifics of a crowd sale because they, they each have their own rules. Like they vary so much from ICO to ICO and there's, there's different trends that happen all the time. So for example, when I got into this in end of July, with District 0x, um, the guys that I worked with, they had a two week period for the ICO, which turned into 48 hours if there was a soft cap of $10 million that was gonna be reached. And they were banking on the fact that all their investors would put the money up front, they would get over the 10 million, 48 hours, scarcity, and it gets filled up. But there was a hack a day before, so they only raised 7 million in the first day, so then it dragged on for like two weeks and you know, like the hype goes away and they only raised like 11 million total. So now every single ICO has a different way of going about it. So before we get to the actual crowd sale, there's like different phases which you can get in. The best one is to get into a pre-sale, but that's a bit hard because for a pre-sale, you need to be an accredited investor, which obviously, you know, we're not. But because there are accredited investors who are not willing to drop, you know, the minimum, which could be 200K into an ICO, they do pools. So they have groups of 50 people. They say, okay guys, we're on the pre-sale for one chain. Um, send your money to this address and we're gonna send it forward. And usually in a pre-sale, you can get a, usually get a discount as well. You're incentivized that way. So you can get like, let's say 20%. So all of a sudden, if you get a 20% discount, mm -hmm. then your multiplier will be even higher. Plus, and this is very important, you get guaranteed entry in the ICO, which is huge. Now, there can also be, recently there's been whitelists. So an ICO says, okay, in order to be whitelisted, fill in this form. Or in order to be whitelisted, you need to be on our Slack and register with an email address or something like that. They have their own rules. But it's generally the ICOs that you're targeting, let's say you have like eight to 10 that you might invest in, just make sure that you do everything possible to be whitelisted so that you have flexibility. Case in point, there's one coming up, Red Pulse, which I didn't want to invest in initially, and now because I was, I was in the pre-sale for Chainlink, but that got rejected, we didn't get our, our stake in, I got my ether back from that, 
I was in the pre-sale for one chain, I was super excited, it's, it's like tomorrow, and today China just announced that they banned all the ICOs, so now I'm gonna get my money back for that. So I'm like, okay, great that I did my registration for Red Pulse, because now I have the flexibility to say, okay, I'm gonna invest in that one. So always keep your options open, don't bank on, on just one ICO, because literally stuff in this space happens, it, it changes every single day. So the whiteness is the second thing, and you might even go through um, KYC and know your customer process, which for example with Kyber, with every account you need to submit a valid ID and a selfie with you holding the ID. So it's basically what they're trying to do with a lot of these ones, especially like a few weeks ago before they, they did these whitelists, you would have whales, so people that have a ton of money, and it would be first come first served. So let's say we start at noon with the ICO, I program my transaction, and I'll show you on the screen, you can control how much money you put in the transaction cost. So if I have a million dollars that I want to invest, I'm gonna put something ridiculous like a thousand dollars in transaction costs, because I don't care if I lose it or not. And my transaction is gonna be mine just like this. And you might put your transaction before me and just put one dollar, which by the way is still like a shit ton for a transaction cost, and yours is not gonna go through because you didn't put enough. So what happened was, and obviously at this scale, when it's so volatile, you will see when you start trading, I could just start selling, let's say $50,000 worth of my coins or $100,000 worth of my coins. And because there's so many new people who don't know what they're doing coming in, they'll see the price drop all of a sudden, like, oh, oh, I need to sell, I need to sell, this thing is going down. You're always subject to those rumors. Plus there's like people spamming the Slack group. So it's not, you shouldn't listen to everyone. So then, I sold $100,000 of what I owned, the price goes down, I start buying up, I start buying up, I buy, buy more, I buy more, I buy more. I can manipulate the market really easily if I have a lot of money. So they're trying to avoid that by making it as hard as possible for you to register multiple accounts. So that's why some of them do KYC checks. So you just have to submit your ID, which obviously you could still fake it, but it's much harder to get a thousand people that can invest a thousand dollars each to show their IDs than it is to, you know, say, free for all. So that's basically the gist of it. So I talked about pre-sales, whitelist guaranteed participation. So usually what happens with the crowd sale, and this is getting rarer and rarer, usually ICOs now, they try to guarantee that you get in a spot. And actually communities, they get pissed off if they don't guarantee. Because there's people backing up the projects for like months and being on the Slack, and then they don't get to get in, and they're like, what the hell is happening? So usually you'll have to pay attention what their instructions are be there a bit early because one other tip is if they put a time uh, some of them do it for their website which is fine but some of them like the really purest ones they'll put a time but that's actually based on blocks so in the blockchain you know the time is measured in blocks that are mined and if they put a specific block that can be approximately 6 p.m but if the blocks are mined faster that might be faster so you need to always be on your tiptoes uh, and be there a bit early so, mostly you will probably send your, your coins from my Ether wallet. The reason for this is because it supports all the tokens. So you send Ether uh, from your address and then they get your Ether and they will send you their coins back in, in return. So what you want to do if that happens is put their address here. Never ever, if you get a message from Slackbot, Slackbot is like the first thing that is hacked. It's like full of spam. Um, always double check the addresses and you can do that in etherscan.io even if you get like an, a, a message all of a sudden because there's been hacks like this they, they might get their emails compromised they might get their like the hackers literally try to exploit any vulnerability so don't send it straight away go on etherscan.io and check their address check sometimes they're they're registered through this I forget what it's called it's like the service where your your ether address can have a name so you can see it's, it's their official address or you can see what kind of history it has because obviously you can see all the transactions. So always check here on a particular address so I can just go on mine for example. And if you put here the address or the, the transaction hash which is kind of like the code of a particular transaction, you can see everything that has happened here. Who sent it to whom and for example this is an exchange Poloniex so you see that it says Poloniex wallet, it doesn't just say a 0x address. So that's with some of them you can tell because they have a name, right? So always check these things and, and don't contribute if you just get an address. So most of them will tell you, okay, we're not gonna tell your address, 
um, via emails, we're not going to tell you our address on Slack, check our website or just check the Slack announcement section where only they can post, only admins can post. So you get the address and then you'll go into my Ether wallet. You're going to put the amount of Ether that you want to send, obviously this will vary um, from case to case. You put the address to which you're sending here, so the address that they make public. Gas limit, um, this usually, I don't really know, some people say it can get clogged. I used 250,000 with the last one that I got in, but you can put 500,000 as well, which is quite a bit. And then this here is really important, this is the way, so the price that you're willing to pay for the gas. With my Ether wallet, you can only go fast AF, which is 60 GUE. But it's not actually, yeah, it's not actually that much with, through MetaMask, it's, it's this plugin where you can use my Ether wallet. You can, I haven't used this that much, but I'm going to start using it now. I need to log in. I'm going to start using it now, I think for the next ICOs. When you send, on the next screen here, I think you can put even like 500 or 1000 way, which is quite a bit, but that will definitely get you in. So once you do that, so you do generate transaction, it will ask you again if you want to confirm, you confirm it and you send it, you have like a green banner here, which is okay, your transaction has been successfully sent, and in bold, you're gonna see a transaction hash, which is basically the code of the transaction. You take that hash, you can, there's a few buttons here that you can press and they do the same thing, but you can take that hash, go into Etherscan, post it here, and then basically this is the transaction hash, right? So once you put that hash here on top, you will see something like this. So you'll see here block height and initially it will say pending. And if it's pending, then you're probably not in. But once you get one block confirmation or a few block confirmations, that's it. That means it's probably going through. And most of the times, if you see that, you're also going to see on your address, if you, if you look up your address here on top, you're going to see um, that an, an equivalent amount to the ether that you're sending will be sent back in their coins. That's what I saw with the, with the last ones. That's basically the game of it. So that's how you, you actually contribute, right? Then, depending on when those tokens are tradable, they will usually mention this. So for example, I, I invested into one on the 31st of August and they said, okay, tokens start be being tradable on the 5th of September. Great, so tomorrow I'm going to be on it. Some of them send you their tokens straight away. 0x, the one that I told you about, they did a whitelist and you had an individual cap for the first 24 hours. You were guaranteed to get in. I invested nearly 2k, that, that was the amount that I was allowed. And in the first 24 hours, 80% of the sum was raised. So almost everyone put the entire sum, which is pretty crazy. And then in the second 24 hours, it was first come, first served. So everyone started sending and the ones that put like really high gas prices. They're the ones who got in. But what we didn't know, if you had several accounts, these guys didn't have identity checks. They sent you, they sent you the tokens straight away and there's this exchange, it's a really shitty exchange, but it works. Ether Delta, it's a decentralized exchange and because of that it's really slow. But also because of that, it picks up all the coins straight away. And they start trading. So 0x was trading at around 2, 2.5x straight after the ICO, during those first 24 hours. So if I had 50 accounts registered with 50 emails, I could have sent $1,800, get the coins, sell them on Ether Delta for like $3,600, put another $1,800, sell them on Ether Delta, make more, make more, make more, and then just you know contribute off different accounts with the sum that I wanted in the end. But I didn't know that, so I didn't register several accounts. It moves so fast that you always have to like take into account every single possible scenario. Let me know if you have any questions. So the way it works is once the ICO is finished and obviously you would want the ICO to reach its target because that means there's more demand, there's more people that wanted to get in and they didn't get in. Mm -hmm. So Manitha, for example, the one that I invested on the 31st of August, it sold out $30 million in like 18 minutes. And that wasn't even 18 minutes, it was 18 minutes because that's how long it took to confirm all the transactions. It probably was like three, four minutes that you had a space to send the transaction. Mm. Now, I know Monifa is going to be good because for like a day afterwards, 
Telegram, their Telegram channel had like people swearing at them. I've never seen people swearing at you because you didn't take their money, you know? They're like, oh, Monita, such a piece of blah, blah, blah. I can't believe you did this. It was rigged, blah, blah. So people were pissed off that they didn't get in. Mm. So then when it hits the exchanges, they're all gonna try to scoop it up on Ether Delta straight away, and it's gonna bump the price. Basically because I really believe in the value of creating relationships and I really believe in the value of um, Connecting ideas with one another 